Hello everyone and happy holidays. It's December 21st, so technically it is the winter solstice up here in the uh, northern hemisphere at least. It's the December solstice. Um, and happy other holidays, all of the other winter holidays to those of you who celebrate. Um, so this is my superlative shoes of 2023. It's close enough to the end of the year and I won't be getting any new shoes before the end of the year. So we'll go ahead and do this and Khan's gonna help me out here. That's why over, we're over here by the uh, fireplace instead of at my desk so that he can kind of keep me company. Um, so these are all 2023 releases. Uh, even though the two shoes that I ran in the most this year are 2022 releases, they're not going to be included on this list. The Asics Nova Blast 3, which I actually got at CAM in 2022, and the Saucony um, Endorphin Speed 3, which is another 2022 shoe. I've got hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles in both of these shoes, and they're both great. I've mentioned that plenty, not 2023 shoes. So they are not in my superlatives. We're going to start off with the biggest surprise shoe, the biggest pleasant surprise shoe of 2023 for me. And I know I'm not alone in saying it, but it's gonna be the On Cloud Surfer 7. Most people have just been calling it the Cloud Surfer. It's the seventh iteration, but it's the biggest surprise because not only is it a big change from the Cloud Surfer, it's a big change from everything On has been doing. And that's why I think it's a pleasant surprise. <clears throat> it's just, um, with the absence of the speed board, it's not overly stiff. In fact, it's not really stiff at all, I don't think. And the, the way that these cloud phase units work with the uh, Helion midsole, it's just a very comfortable, very smooth, very adaptable ride. And it's a great casual shoe too. So this is my biggest pleasant surprise. Uh, and there's a reason that I'm starting off with the pleasant surprise you'll see in a couple of minutes. Um, after the biggest pleasant surprise, there's the biggest disappointment. Unfortunately, not all shoes uh, are what we want them to be. And for me, the biggest disappointment was the New Balance Super Comp Trainer V2. I loved the V1. I've talked about the V1 when I've talked about the SC Trainer V3. I mean, SC Racer V3. Um, this one just... It did not live up to the first version. I know they tried to slim it down. They even made it race legal for those who care about that. It's 39 millimeters in the heel instead of 47. Uh, they've got the similar Energy Arc carbon plate in there, but it's just lost some of the magic. I do appreciate that the upper is an engineered mesh upper instead of the woven upper that they had before. The upper is a little bit more adaptable, but it's just, it's lost its specialness. Now, I'm not going to say it's a bad shoe because... I mean, I, you can tell how dirty it is. I've still put it to some good use um, in some long runs, even picking up the pace a little bit, but it's just, it doesn't have the wow factor that the original did. So this is my biggest disappointment. Not saying it's a bad shoe, just uh, it's fallen, it, its stock has gone down. Okay, next is best daily trainer. I had to go, I had to introduce the Cloud Surfer as my biggest surprise because on the heels of that came the On Cloud Eclipse, which also would have been the biggest surprise of the year if I wasn't already prepared for the improvements that On was making. Um, I haven't been running in this shoe all that long, but I've enjoyed every mile I've had in it. Lots of slow, easy miles. Uh, I've picked it up here and there, even done some strides in it. But as a daily trainer and a mileage hog, and something that can also work really well as a casual shoe, much like the Cloud Surfer, I just, I keep on reaching for this shoe. So it's got that want to run in factor um, that I think bumps it into the best daily trainer category for 2023 for me. Um, it does have the speed board in it, but the speed board is at, at ground level. It's not, it's, it's underneath the uh, double layer of cloud phase. So it's not interacting with your foot all that much. It's doing what it does for the stability of the shoe while still maintaining the soft feel I think uh, the, the feel flavor I talked about when I did a review of this shoe. Um, so this is my best daily trainer for uh, easy miles. Moving on from best daily trainer, I'm gonna move into best performance trainer. Now, before I go into this one, I will say that I use a lot of racing shoes as performance trainers. 
Uh, I'll do a lot of tempo workouts in super shoes and racing shoes. Um, and even some of the, the faster stuff, I try and do an, use an unplated shoe for track work or for faster stuff on the road. So I'm limiting it to, and to not using racing shoes for this category. I'm talking about shoes that are not billed as racing shoes, but are billed as trainers, lightweight performance trainers. And I'm going to go with the Topo Athletic Cyclone 2. Um, this was uh, another surprise for a lot of people. It was less of a surprise for me because I had seen a few people, you know, talk up this shoe about how surprised they were about it. But, I mean, it's unbelievably light. It's the lightest shoe I have uh, in this lineup today of, of several different shoes. And as far as a straight workout shoe, uh, if you want something that's flexible but still has a, uh, a nice foot-shaped uh, toe box... Uh, can do a lot of things, can do fast intervals, can do marathon pace, can do tempo runs, and you don't want to, you want to, let's say, avoid plates because you don't want to run in them all the time. This is a no-brainer. It is a no-brainer, and I'm really excited to see when Topo comes out with the Spectre 2 uh, over the summer in 2024. They're going to take some of the success with this and move it into their you know, their performance shoe, what, the, what I, I think the Spectre is probably the closest thing they're going to get to uh, a dedicated racer. So if it has any kind of success that, that the Cyclone 2 does, I'll, I'll be excited for that. And it's, just, it's, a, it's a very comfortable shoe. It just fits my foot really well. So kudos to the, the uh, Cyclone 2 for best performance trainer for me for 2023. Best trail shoe. There's not a lot I have to say here because I've run in exactly two trail shoes this year. Uh, one of them I've done a review for. The other one I chose to race in. Um, the two trail, I just brought them both here. There is, it's another Topo shoe, the Topo Mountain Racer 3. And the Saucony Endorphin uh, Rift. And I would say that as far as a trail runner, especially if you're looking for performance, my trail shoe of the year best trail shoe is going to be the Saucony Endorphin Rift. Uh, it takes everything you want out of, well, not everything, but close to everything you want out of the uh, Endorphin Speed and puts it in a, in a beefy trail platform that's not too beefy. It's still pretty flexible. It's got good grip. Uh, it secures your lockdown. I did have to size up a half size in this, um, but I think I'm going to be wearing this for all my races. Not to speak down about the Mountain Racer 3, uh, I think if I'm going out for just a long day on the trails at easy pace, or even going out and using it as a light hiker or, or a fast packer, then this is a great shoe. So if that's what you're looking for in a trail shoe, then go with this. My trail running shoe of the year is the Saucony Endorphin Rift. From there, best racer. Um, you guys know I have a lot of super shoes that I use as racing shoes, but this one should be no surprise, especially if you've seen, uh, my Chicago marathon recap and, uh, the marathon simulator leading up to that. It's got to be the Saucony Endorphin Elite. Um, oh, man, it's just so light. It's so, you can feel the performance coming out of this, even standing still in your hand. Um, it, it just works for me. It works for me. It propels me forward. I feel like at a fast marathon, it kept going the whole way. And I feel like it can handle anything faster than that too. I'm excited to race more in this, but I've got to save it for those races because I do think durability might be an issue for this guy. Um, so I definitely want to want to hold on to it for as much as I can and, and use it for only those race miles or those high quality miles. Endorphin Elite, uh, best racing shoe. Uh, the last one, best value. And this is a big one because running shoes cost a lot, but I wouldn't put it in best value if it wasn't a high quality shoe as well. This one is up there for best daily trainer. It's up there for best performance trainer. I think most of these shoes that I have positive reviews for, it could give a run for its money. But it started off even full price being not expensive for a running shoe. And there have been some great sales on it this year, bringing it down even lower. And I have not many bad things to say about the Saucony Convara 14. Uh, it's lightweight. It's nearly as light as the Cyclone 2. They're practically the same weight. It is lighter 
than the Endorphin Elite and any of the other super shoes out of there. Uh, it handles miles just as well as the Cloud Surfer, and I feel like, you know, it, it could be a mileage hog. There are some durability concerns, like it's not going to be as durable as the Cloud Eclipse, certainly, mainly because there's no outsole. It's all that power run um, midsole being used as the outsole, and you can tell some of the high wear in my general high wear area. But if that's the only concern, um, especially when you consider how lightweight the upper is and how lightweight the shoe is, I mean, some people will go out and bang out 20 milers in this all the time, but if I'm just using it as a daily trainer where I want to pick up the pace, it's great. I mean, if you can find one on sale right now, I think there are plenty of end-of-year sales, pick it up. I promise you, you won't be disappointed. Um, or if you are disappointed, you're wrong. <laughs> It's all right. We're all allowed to have opinions, even wrong opinions. Um, but those are my superlatives for the year. And I'd love to hear in your comments what you agree with, what you disagree with, what you're surprised with. What was your most pleasant surprise? What was your biggest disappointment? And what is something that I missed out on in 2023? I know I missed out on the Convara Pro, but I'm not really missing it. This is all the Convara I need, I think. And don't ask me what my favorite shoe overall is because, you know, that's asking sort of like asking what your favorite child is. For me, I would say con. Um, thank you guys for tuning in uh, to my superlatives for 2023. Uh, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share the video. And uh, ding the bell for notifications. And uh, have a happy holiday. If you're with family, enjoy your time with family. If you're traveling, be safe, and we'll see you in the next one. I should also add, I will put links in the description of some of the uh, shoe reviews for some of the ones I talked about here today, as well as a link to the shoe off that has five other super shoes I did not talk about today that also um, kind of deserve to be mentioned uh, for this year as far as, you know, great super shoes of 2023. Again, thank you. We'll see you next time.